for as long as I remember, I've, I've drawn and, and made work. So from being a, a young boy, so sketching, painting, that kind of thing. This is from when you were a child? This is from when I was a child, yes. And I, I think it's always just been part of something that I've done growing up, just being interested visually in things. And I've just, for as long as I can remember, I've, I've sketched and painted and, and drawn. I think initially um, I was always drawing nature and, and sort of animals and things I'd see on the TV and, and kind of replicating it as best as I could. Um, it wasn't very academic at all. But what we did have there was an amazing um, set of art teachers. Uh, Trevor Boyd and Andrew Stook, who I, I owe an awful lot to for sort of guidance in, in where, to, uh, where to kind of look for inspiration and, and how to observe as an artist. And also just for being probably two of the most inspirational people that I've met in my life. If I didn't have them at that point growing up, and it probably wouldn't have persuaded me to, to actually carry on making art properly. So the training for me was um, how to observe and how to make a mark on the canvas and, and, and just how to draw inspiration from other artists and, um, and just things around you, you know, be inspired from your environment and from people. So they were definitely the, the, the people that gave me the most training, if you like, but I can never say that I've been formally trained in how to draw. It's just something that I've always managed to do, you know. The art in my family background, or the, the, the sort of the artistic influence, I would probably say comes from, I think, my, my father's side, although my mother is quite creative as well. Uh, they're not artists, but throughout our family there's always been people that have been able to, to draw or sketch or have been quite creative in other ways. Uh, my, my, my dad's quite a good technical drawer, so I think I possibly got something from him. Um, my mother's got a good creative eye, and uh, we, we've we've got quite an interesting family uh, in, in in that sense. But there's no one that has been an artist or a painter or a musician. Um, my, my brother's my brother's creative, and so is my sister in, in different ways. But there's been no one who's been an artist, uh, you know, as a as a career or as a profession before then. My principal form of expression, yes, it's, it's the, the vessel I'm using at the moment is, is painting. I've always sketched and drawn and, and made drawings more than I have painting. Painting for me is, it's taken me quite a while to find the, um, to find the sort of balance that I'm happy with. I've done performance at college when I was at the Slade. Um, to be perfectly honest, I probably spent more time making installations and uh, coming up with ideas before performances, um, experimenting in film. I, I pretty much tried everything at, at the Slade School to some degree because prior to that I had just done painting um, and, and, and drawing. So it was important for me to, to try other things uh, and um, see what worked. But now, today, I'm happy with the way I'm painting and I think I've arrived at a, uh, you know, may maybe a style for want of a better word, but somewhere between drawing and painting in terms of the look that's, that I'm happy with. And um, I think that's quite important. How do I function in the, the art world 
presently. That's uh, that's an interesting one. I, I, it's the, the last sort of three years uh, of being an artist in London has has been extremely interesting. But from the point of view of seeing what's actually happening to the art world currently, um, I think it's it's a sort of interesting, uncertain kind of time for the art world at the moment. There's the thing that's always struck me is that the, there aren't definitive scenes, that there isn't a definitive movement at the moment. You have lots and lots of pockets of, of artists and, and small groups of people representing what they're doing, trying to create an identity, which is in itself really, really interesting. Um, where I sort of see myself in that, uh, I'm not quite sure yet. I've I'm someone that's influenced by a huge amount of what I see and interpreting that in my work currently is that that is still developing. Yes, I feel, I feel currently that there isn't a strong art movement or direction in art and I think uh, that this show, so the, the, the show um, that I currently have my piece guard in um, at Darren Baker Gallery is, is a good representation of that. It's a representation of the, the diversity of London, uh, the types of people and creative practitioners that are arriving in London or have arrived in the last few years, um, making very different work but also work that that does reflect you know, the, the sort of diversity and perhaps the uncertainty that we're seeing at the moment. And that in itself is really interesting. And, uh, uh, but I, I, I would say that it, it, it's, it conflicts against the argument that there is you know, an avant-garde, for example. Isis Phoenix Arts, uh, not having a gallery space, uh, and in terms of how that sits within the art world currently, I, th I think that is a more, I use the word modern, maybe it's not the right word to use, but I think it's, it is more representative of now, perhaps, in terms of the, the international approach of combining groups of artists from all over the world and having an international presence. Maybe the idea of a fixed gallery space, you know, in a world where we can communicate so quickly with each other, um, you know, through various different means, is something that is is evolving, and I think Isis Phoenix Arts represents that kind of direction, and and obviously this show is, I think it's a testament to, you know, to that evolvement. Uh, evolvement is not really a word, but that coming together. I mean, this this painting is uh, first of all, it's it's quite a in terms of the subject matter and how normally I approach my subject matter. It's it, it's quite an odd one. It, it sort of sits kind of outside my normal approach. In that, it's actually from a um, a photograph. Uh, that I took and, and also a couple of drawings um, that I made in 2003 um, or was it the, the end of 2002? I can't quite remember but it was during the, the anti-Iraq war march so against military action in Iraq back in 2003 and um, again I, I captured him just walking through the park watching everyone march and he was stood there in Hyde Park. It was generated from, from my own photograph um, of, um, of the man. And um, that's interesting in itself because uh, I wouldn't normally work straight from a photograph. Uh, using the camera and using a photograph to build up uh, an entire piece is an important and instant uh, method, if you like, to to create something um, 
especially when you, you want to define features and characteristics of an individual. So from that aspect, it's a slightly different approach for me. Um, but I, I totally forgot that I'd, I'd taken it, so I only found the, the photo on an old USB stick when I was clearing out my studio literally uh, three months ago. And there it was, there was this man who uh, had just emerged from the past and, and from a, a moment that was quite relevant historically, obviously in terms of military action and, and you know, uh, uh, world conflicts is still as relevant today. And I just felt I had to represent him as a painting, as something that was a continuation from the photograph. So up until a point, the photo was very important to capture his, his expression, which I think is quite unique. And it, it's, it's sort of sandwiched between being, I guess, showing quite a lot of empathy for, for people that are marching and, and the cause, but also perhaps sadness, maybe, maybe confusion as, as well as to why people may have been marching. You, know, you just don't really know what he's thinking at that time. And that unique expression I had to capture. In terms of the rest of the composition, that became quite fluid and that I wanted to represent more of the drawn element, if that makes sense. So it was very much um, a quite a loose approach to, to using the photo, if that makes sense. I mean, I'm, I'm happy, first of all, just to be part of a, a group show, I guess, this early on in, into the year. That for me is is something that I wanted to to achieve quite quickly within 2015, so I can tick that off the list. Um, after this, I, I think obviously I've got one painting here. Uh, it's it's a, it's a large piece, and I think its uh, its involvement in this show is, is is quite crucial. So I for me, I'd like people to to take something away from it, obviously. Um, and just be more interested in, in, in what I'm doing. So if, if, it, if it leads on to more interest towards my own work um, as a direct result, in whatever way that is, then I'd be happy with that. The next place from, from this show and from here yeah. is just to, uh, just to make as much work as possible, I think, and, and, and really assemble a body of work that is, is representative of, of myself um, in London and, and also what feeds my practice, which is, which is people, um, circumstances, and tying those together. And if I can assemble uh, a, a significant body of work in a, in a, and generally just be more productive than I have been over the last few months, then that will be an achievement for me. You've just moved studio, certainly. I'm about to move studio uh, from the, the Bermondsey project um, in, in South London, which has been uh, a, a good, safe and solid starting block, mm -hmm. I think, for, for being, you know, for, for having a full-time practice. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I want to become, I guess, um, just more focused, if I can become more focused and, and, and just generate a lot more work, then that's something that I'll be 